Hi, I'm Lyle from Made by Marley and today I'm going to be showing you how to take a plain old piece of furniture, how to apply decoupage, how to apply moulds, to stencil, to blend, to create something absolutely unique like this. So just going to walk you, we're going to do a film around the piece but I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. It's vintage, it has been painted with gloss paint so it's a little bit chippy here and there. Martin's had to do quite a few repairs in the inside. The gliders were broken under here so he's fixed all these and he's had to sand off. For some reason the paint job came right round the edge of here. It was really messy so he sanded that off. It's all been thoroughly cleaned. Um, so Martin do you just want to do a close up? Four drawers, pretty bog standard vintage really and let's see what we can make of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the hardware and then I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do next. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be decoupaging. So uh, this is um, a mint by Michelle decoupage um, sheet and we're going to get on and we're going to apply it to the front. So generally with decoupage paper it's it's sort of tissue paper and you wet a paintbrush and you cut it out and you pull it apart but this is kind of like slightly more the, it's repelling the water so I'm going to have to rip it so I'm ripping it so that there's a, a better edge to blend it with so I really want a little bit of the green rounder um, but I don't want the rest at the moment. Um, it's quite big, so I'm going to take this top part off first, I think, actually. So as you can see, you don't need to be particularly precise. I mean, you might not want to if you choose a decoupage paper to do this with it, but I, mine's is not quite the right size. So, and I could blend it out to there, I could blend it out to there, but I've decided to cut it in the middle and take this out as far as I can and blend my part in the middle just so it, it looks a little bit more finished. So I'm just going to carry on ripping round. Whoop, ripped a bit close to our head there. Good job we can fix all these things. And we're going to build up our own background for this, so don't be stressing or worrying. We'll make this work. And we'll put all the pattern and everything back in. It's just it's not quite wide enough and I want to do something else with mine. Put a different sort of, sort of background onto her. Now, I'm wondering whether I want the bottom. I'm going to actually just rip off this base as well and we'll put this back in. We'll paint this all back in. But because uh, I want to I want to move this down if you know what I mean. Because this I want to put right down the bottom. Um, so I can blend this out on this side because it's dark and dark. It's black and black, that's fine, I can do that. So this is gonna go down the bottom and she is going to be sort of here. Now when you're doing drawers make sure like for example you don't have the drawers where her eyes are going to be and you know you kind of look at where you want her to be in the, the sort of position of her and I think I'm pretty pretty happy with that and we'll make that work down there um, then she's not button up against any drawers I'm going to be cutting through here and here and here and here. Now when you're applying decoupage it's always better to have a white background that's why I've just got the the finish that came with um, the drawers. Um, I'm just leaving that like that till I apply my decoupage paper so that 
it gives it the best chance of showing up if you put um if your background's dark and you try and put a decoupage paper over the top of it it won't show up as well so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to apply it with um varnish lacquer some people use um mod podge some people use um pva i mean there's no rhyme or reason to what you want to put it on with but i'm wanting to put mine on with um with lacquer because i have the best results with that so i'm just looking at i was really prepared before i started but as per usual i can't find any i'll use this just now um so what you're going to do is you're going to work in small sections you need a poly bag to put around your hands so that you don't touch the paper and a lino print roller just to kind of get out any wrinkles um so where did we see i'm trying to work out whether i want our slightly i think i'm going to do something like this and have her slightly off like this because i'm going to be doing some stripes here so just thinking about where my hand is going to be off a bit. yeah i'm I'm pretty good with that sort of positioning. So I'm going to do our first section first, which is this first drawer. And make sure that there's no lumps or chunky bits in your varnish. You want it completely smooth. Now this isn't the smoothest surface to, go to begin with actually, but let's see how we go. Um, no lumps or bumps there. I'm going to bring her back up. And I'm going to kind of... You've got a little bit of a lead time with, with the varnish. Not much though. So let's start here at the top. I did iron this before I started, but uh, it has been pretty... And the secret to good decoupaging is, is to go slow, just do a part at a time, work your wrinkles out to the edges, don't put your finger marks. If you get a piece that's wrinkled, pull it back up and smooth it back down. Now I'm going to fix that, that was where I got over vigorous with my ripping. I think some of this is to do with my surface that is underneath, but let's see. on so you have to keep working your wrinkles really gently you can be a little bit robust but you know you don't want to be too rough with it I'm working small sections and work out to the outside edges I'll lift that up a little bit and I think it's getting a wee bit dry underneath here so I'm just going to add a little bit under her face pull it and smooth it down like like that and back plastic bag to protect the paper now I know there was a little bit of lump under my finish there on my paint so I didn't work out as far as the the heart so I'm just gonna work that along I need to if you don't think you've got any lacquer under a piece go back because if you don't it'll end up bubbling and it'll just make a make a mess and you don't want that so I am pretty happy give and take a few lines with that now I'm going to work on my next section. I'm just going to try and get some of the, the crinkly, wrinkly bits out of there. I'm not so happy. I think it just shows up any sort of wrinkle in the finish, especially on black where her hair is. So we're lifting this up. 
being gentle because remember this has got kind of fragile here where your paste's been on it where your lacquer's been on it and it will tear so you have to be uber gentle with it don't be too rough at this point don't yank it up because you'll you'll rip your paper in half uh ask me how i know um all these things i think we've all done at some point so just but remember also to take it right up to that edge because as i said if you don't have la um, lacquer on it and you lay it down later on it will dry and uh, there'll be a bubble there now this is where it all gets a little bit tricky because you're going in the relief of your door I lost my bag it's behind my back so we're kind of pushing up at this join here but not too much because you don't want to start ripping it we will cut this we will not we will not let it rip and then we're going over this bump here and we want to get this recess as smooth as possible now as you can see i've got a bit here and i think it's because there isn't any lacquer underneath I'm just going to run under there with my brush and smooth that back down. Yeah, fix that bit. And as I said, you just have to be hugely patient and apply it in small sections. Don't get over ambitious. Don't cover your whole piece in lacquer and decide that you're just going to go for it because it, it'll, it'll not work out. <laughs> okay, so that's our decoupage paper on. I know it looks like a bit of a dog's dinner right now, but things always get better um, as you go along. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply some moulds. So here I have um, some IOD moulds. This is the lock and key one, and I think probably I'm going to do this one or this one and glue that here. The rope mould, because there's a rope that goes around here, I want to tie this into the design. So this rope mould is going to be coming down this side and down this side and maybe other places not decided yet. Um, classic elements, yeah I am going to be using some classic elements, possibly this big grand one and this one here. Maybe not though, I'm not sure about the shell, possibly this one, but this one definitely. And I'm going to be using um, the hearts from the fleur de lis and I'm going to put those in a row up here and I always like this one um, from Laurel so I might do some of these Laurel leaves but um, there's plenty of tutorials in my videos on how to you know do cast molds I've got some paper clay you use some corn flour put it in the mold fill it with the clay peel it out and once I've got all my molds done um, I'll glue some of them on and then I'll get to the end of that and I'll show you me gluing the rest on. Okay? Okay, so I've been busy applying the moulds. I've done what I said. I've put the rope down here on both sides. I've put some hearts on. I've done some more rope here to tie this piece in here. But I realised there was this little detail in our sort of tiara and I thought it looked like quite like the top of a fleur de lis. So I've put these fleur de lis is on and I've got a couple left to apply which I'm just going to do just making sure that when you make you put your molds on that you put your glue right to the very edges because that gives it best possible you know adhesion and um, this has been sitting for a bit so it's a little bit crusty make sure you're happy with your position smooth it all out get it looking good and I've got one more, which I think I'm going to probably put here. Or down here, I think. Now, what we're going to do with this um, is we're going to leave it to completely dry, or at least until the moulds have formed a good enough crust that we can you know, paint them without waterlogging them and, and losing the details. So um, I'm going to do that. But before I go, I just want to show you how little details matter. Now, if you look at this heart, it's got this ruffle on it. And what I did with the IOD heart was I just got a... See this little ruffle here? Sorry, my hands are covered in 
clay. This little waffle here, how I did was I recreated it on these hearts just by doing this. And I'm going to do this one down here just on camera so you can see. So I just pushed it in with a little bit of force and that just kind of gives it that sort of ruffled edge that we're looking for that kind of ties in with the, the decoupage paper. And that's the thing about these sorts of things. All the little details when you're creating um, furniture really, really matter. So I'm just going to, I'm sorry, I'm doing it left handed because Matt's got the camera there. So goodness knows what that looks like. So I'm just going to do that with these two hearts and this one down here and this one over here. And then I'm going to let it dry overnight and I'll give it a wee clean up tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll cut the drawers and we'll deal with any that's coming away from where there's no, you know, the gap in the drawers. We'll deal with that. The decoupage papers went on nice. I'm happy with that. And we'll start filling in all our parts with paint. That's what we're going to do tomorrow. Okay, so the moulds are completely dry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the drawers and then I'm going to do a base coat. Now, I had mixed this up for a previous project. I think it was a Boussom Blue and possibly Sage Green. It's hard to see, but this is the sort of colour I'm starting with. And it's just this here, and I'm just really wanting to use up the paint. I've got some Athenian Black, which I'm going to mix up, but I'm not really blending this coat. I'm just going to try and get it there and thereabouts. Now, before we do anything, we need to cut. Um, I just need to make sure I cut it in the right place. I'll start up here. So I'm just cutting my drawers. There wasn't anything to cut there. There we go. Now, you might find when you do this, that you need to have your varnish to hand to kind of, um, you know, seal these pieces down. Um, I'm just going to have to get something to open this with. So I managed to get them open. Um, I cut across here. I just wanted to check everything was okay. And for the moment, everything is fine. So we're just going to get on. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint it with this sort of dark green I might blend some black into it, but literally I'm just kind of base coating this. It's a slick surface that I'm working on, so um, it's going to need multiple coats to get this to where I want to go. So I'm going to do the whole piece. I'm using a small brush right now, an artist brush, just so I can get into all my moulds. I'm going to do the whole piece this dark green. So I'll get, a, I'll get on and I'll do the whole piece this green, top, side, front, and then we'll um, get to the good bits next. Okay, so we've got this. Now, in some areas, I've given it two coats of this green and in other areas, you can see, you can still see the whites showing through. This is all going to be covered multiple times with a blend. But the first thing I want to do is I, I'm going to be doing some stamping on this, but I'm also wanting to do some sort of to tie the striping here. So what I'm going to do is, which seems like a bold move, is I'm going to blend some cream down here to about here and I've already done it on the top and all I did was I've got Annie Sloan's Old Ochre a little bit on my brush and I'm not too worried about the hearts or anything don't I'm not I'm just kind of the space here so what I'm going to do is because I want it to be this sort of dirty dirty kind of white colour. Um, I don't want too much. Now don't be freaked out because I can blend this into the edge once I've done the stripes. I'm just kind of um, bringing this along here like this first of all. We can even incorporate some of these hearts into the stripes. So let's just bring that up here to the fleur de lis. I think this is where as far out because we're going to bring our dark in. Um, I think Mac, I think Mac was a little bit panicked. He said, "Are you going to blend this?" <laughs> so I said, "No, I'm just, I'm just going to leave it like that." So that was quite entertaining for me here in my brush. So I'm going to bring it down to about here. I think a little bit more old ochre. So I'm using old ochre because it's not a pure white it's a 
yellowy, a yellowy white. I don't mind too much of that goes on today, but I don't want too much of it. And I think probably this is going to be enough to put the mask and tape on and work me some kind of stripe. It doesn't matter if there's some lighter and darker bits, this is going to be incorporated into the stripe and I want the stripe to come down as far as there. So we've done this piece here. Going to let that dry off and then I'm going to show you how I am going to work the blending in. So let's start in this area here. I have um, Annie Sloan's olive. Now if you look at this, it's got sort of kind of, I've got some um, Athenian black and I also have a sort of grey mix which I'm probably going to stamp this sort of colour over the top of this. Um, so I'm just using a rounded edge, a round edge artist brush and I'm looking at the colours so I'm going to start with a little bit of this. Now up here it starts to get, we can see the line here is starting to get darker so and then you can soften it up with your finger, soften it round with your finger. Now then I'm going to just the tiniest, tiniest touch of black because you don't want to make it too dirty. And we will start to build up this pattern here that was once here. But we just need to get some of this on first. Try and get rid of this, the green that I put underneath. The green was just actually because it kind of went kind of with this one down here and it was a colour I'd already mixed for another project and I thought I may as well use it up and I thought it would be quite a good base to start with. So as you can see this is a little bit too sagey green right now so we need some dark on this and then just need a little bit and I'm working it towards this colour here because it does get quite dark round about here. I think I can put a little bit more, I'm just scared to infiltrate too much black into it and then you can't get rid of it but it does get much darker up here so to be as dark here. So I'm going to go ahead, you, you get the general purpose of blending, you're, you're looking at your colour underneath, now you can see here that's pretty much a bang on sort of blend there um, and I'm just going to do the whole piece with multiple layers and I'm also going to paint these out black and then we'll get on to the striping. Okay, let me just talk you through what I've done so far. So I've begun the initial blend. Now blending takes a long time. So this is me just starting to kind of get to grips with it. I've started to put in bits around here. I've started to put some of the red and the white around these parts to match this. I'm happy with most of this. And I'm not happy with this side because I want to do the stripes and I can't progress on until the stripes are done so I can blend in. So I'm going to move on to doing the stripes next. So I'm just going to use um, Annie Sloan's paint, which is Emperor Silk. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put my, not don't overload your brush, but I want to try and predominantly put the reddest of red down the centre-ish like this and like this and we'll take that to there and like this now there's going to be a million touch-ups on this so I'm not too worried that I've just touched those hearts I just really wanted to see how they would look I haven't masked that off but I'm just going to do a hint of red there then what I'm going to do is going to slightly slightly dip, dip my brush in the Athenian black and I'm going to blend the dark at the edges. A little bit more dark. 
And the thing is, I'm trying not to put too much on my brush. If you feel this is getting all a little bit too dry, you can add a little bit of water, but you do run the risk of it running under your, bleeding under your stencils. So, you know, best to kind of go with caution. The reason why I'm doing these stripes is to try and tie this piece and this, the, you know, her skirt together. And obviously the rope's going to be gold. And because of this, these the fleur de lis are going to be gold. And it will all pull together. It just, just you know, it, this this takes a little bit of time, and um, it's good that um, you know I'm not I'm not making you watch every single bit, but it's good to stop every so often and just kind of like run you through the thought process. Basically, blending is just picking all the colours out of your background or your decoupage and just making it work in one kind of cohesive piece and adding parts and, you know, like some dimension with some moulds and, you know, make it as interesting as possible. I'm just trying to get around that little heart there. So I'm just going to go on and paint this last stripe and then we'll do the big reveal. Okay, so I'm just going to remove my tape very gently because... My paint's not really in theory cured. Um, so I'm just kind of taking this off really gently. This is where the kind of dark, oh, that fell on my paint. This is where the dark edge that I put in is going to work. Now at the moment, it looks like they're going into nowhere, but we are going to blend this all in now, just so the stripes all carry on. Um, gently does it. Any bits like that, you can just distress back. I'm not too worried about that. And down here where this hat was. I'm going to go in with the dark just round here because I'd made a lot more white down here than I needed. And I'm just going to, I mean, it's not quite dry. It might be dry enough to kind of show you a little bit of um, how I would do it. So, nah, it's not dry enough to, to, to show, I don't think, how I would do it, but um, I'm going to let it dry and then we'll just kind of, if I add a little bit more of that, maybe it might work. Because that means I can get this bit down here finished up and looking good. And see these little boo-boos here when you come to do them? If you have anything like that, you can just put, pretty much do something like that. Actually, you need to, I need to make the lighter colour there so that that works. Hang on a minute. Um, it's turning a little too light. Just go across there like that. You can kind of distress these edges by doing this so that it's not so contrived. Now, I am going to go away and kind of like actually blend the proper colour that makes that look, but you know what I'm trying to achieve there. Um, so best not to fiddle with it too much, obviously, until it's dry. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of doing something I, I wouldn't normally do. I'm just kind of showing you on camera, you know, how you would kind of blend this and make it look. I mean, I've got a bit grey too much there, so. And then I need to replace this here with my black. I still need to fix this bit here, but it's not quite dry enough to do. And we'll bring this up with some white. Um, something like that. But I'm running the risk of it starting to blend a bit pink there. So um, I don't like that corner there. So we'll just 
We'll make this work and we'll fit this in. We'll have our stripes and then we can start adding some gold. But I need to work on this part down here. The top and the sides are pretty much going to be the same. I'm going to put the dark black round with the sort of greeny colour. And I'm going to have the stripes on the side and on the top. And me blending it in to make it look like it's distressed. The next thing we're going to do once I've got the blend right is we're going to start stamping in some pattern onto the background to make it all work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run over what's happened so far just so you get it. So when you last saw it, I was just blending everything in. And after that, um, and I'm going to show you here and here, I put the gold on, on these pieces to make them like this and then just rubbed, rubbed a little bit of the green over. Now this stamping is just, uh, it's uh, you can use any stamp to do a bit of stamping. You don't need to put the whole thing on, so you just stamp it with a sponge and just put it round your piece where you like it. I'm not entirely sure whether I like this stripey bit of distress, but I do think it gives it something else, so I'm gonna leave it just now. Um, so I'm going to show you here what I did. So I just got my sponge with a bit of paint on it, put it on my mat, just put a little bit of paint onto it like that. And then just find somewhere where you want to put the detail and just press it down. Mm, maybe a bit there as well. And you just, you're just blending it in and you just, I think my paint there got a little bit um, kind of blurred. I'll just put a little bit of... Um, more white onto this and then you've got a better idea now you shouldn't really do this with a brush but it's just so you can it shows up i can always blend it um away again so on a darker area like that and like that so this is all i did to do the stamping so this is from the uh, bohemian dreamer set of stamps by redesigned by prima um that's, that's, that's how I did this. These areas here, I just got a, a small artist brush. I've got gold paint here. You know, you don't need a huge amount. And all I did was, you're not going into where the, the black is. You're just hitting the high spots so that it looks like this here. We're trying to make it look like rope. And all I did was, I just run that down there. Now, it's a little bit dark in there, so you can get... Um, a smaller brush and just go in with um, some of your kind of blendy colour and you can just go round in there and just make sure that your, your edges are are neat and there's no, just blend that away like that. Uh, how I did the hearts, I just, I've just painted I just got my gold again and I put white underneath them. You saw that the last time. And then all I did was I, go, I went over the top with the gold and did a little bit of darker line around there because I'm trying to match it obviously with the main heart. Um, once I've done the fleur de lis, I'll do this fleur de lis here. Or fleur de lis. Not with this brush. Um, I'm at kind of a funky angle. But... Uh, That's all I did, I just painted it in like that and uh, I waited till it was dry, I'm going to show you where it's a little bit wet and I just ran over it with some of the green like that, just to highlight it, just like I've done here. So we, we've done the stamp it, we did the blend and we blended it in, we cut her out, um, we ripped her out, we ripped the paper out, we did a blend, the whole piece, we painted the rope black. We painted around the hearts white and um, we did the red in the middle of the hearts. Now what I did do with um, the other hearts was I picked a nice part of the stencil and I just ran it over the top like that just to give my hearts a little bit more interest. Just like that. So we know how we've done there. I did the gold rope down the edges with the gold. And now I'm going to move on to, to tell you what I did with the sides and we're going to do the top. So this is how I did the gold rope. I just did exactly the same thing as I did on the front. And this is why it's really good. If you remember how bland the piece started, this is why it's really good to add, add your mouldings. 
because um, you can paint it in. So that's all I'm doing here. Just making sure that that's nice. How I did the sides was I painted um, the um, green and then I distressed and dry brushed the white on. And then I just got the same Bohemian stamp, stamped it down. And then I started with the dark edge here and I just gradiated it in so that it looks, I didn't want it to all blend in. I wanted it to look like a distress panel and that's how it's came out. It's got, got nice distress. So both sides of the piece have got this on and let's move on to the top. So the top, I, I, saw, I, I didn't want my, my stripes to go too far. So I put a piece of tape on. All I've done is put a piece of tape down and used a piece of tape in the middle as a marker all the way along. So my stripes are kind of equal. I've got some dark and light and dark red and I'm just going to go along my piece like this and do the stripes on the top and try and get some dark edges in there so that um, there's some contrast. I don't want that too wet. And then what we're going to do is we're just literally going to blend in the sides. So I'll go along and I'll do these stripes and then we'll get to the next part. So I'm just removing the tape. Oop. Some of it wants to come all at once. This is a kind of messy job. Just make sure your fingers are not too messy. Um, so you don't touch your piece. And rub it all over your clothes. Um, kind of looks a bit like a flag at the moment, but one shortly and we'll just get on and we'll blend it now I pulled these off when it was still quite damp because I don't want it to start to set up and leave crusty edges put my glasses on to see and I'm reasonably happy with that so to blend okay to make this all work what we're going to do is we're going to put our Athenian black around the edges Oh, the piece, not go too far because you want to blend this in a minute. And I'm going to take that to about here, maybe a bit further, about there. And I have the dark green here and I'm just going to start kind of, it's a wetter paint so I'm blend that off. want that sort of purpley colour actually. So all I'm doing is kind of, my brush is quite wet so I'm just trying to bring this into the dark. Just to kind of give it the same sort of appearance and of the distress that's on the front. Um, some of the greens and some of the dark blues. I think it could do with a little bit more dark blue. I put a little bit of dark blue in this green when I mixed it up the, um, the other day. Um, I'm sure I did so I think but that's actually coming out quite nice. So I'm not gonna mess about with that too much. I'm just gonna bring this along here a wee bit. Don't want it to look so round. That's a stress. Just wanna, just, that's probably enough. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that side. And I might put a bit more black on here. But I'm just gonna work away with the blend on the top. I'm going to finish this side and then it's time for handles and sealer. So I decided this needed something as well, something to kind of zhuzh it up. So I'm just going to show you the gold. Now I haven't bothered cleaning my stencil because that'll give it that even a bit more distressed look. I'm not covering all of the stencil, I'm just kind of patting over it. And I'm just going to put it on the areas that have the... Um, the grey, well the grey green 
and I'm just reusing it over and over again because that's what gives it that really unique sort of worn look like that and then I can load it up again to do this back edge now I'm only gonna just run it along there for that and I'm just gonna whoop, do that and maybe summon this edge here um, along this front and I'm just using the stamp every way not not worrying, not being contrived, not measuring, not doing any of these things. Just, just basically sticking it on. So I'll get on and do the rest of that. And while we've done that, we can show you the hardware. The hardware's on. Nice, lovely red to, to coordinate with the piece hardware. So I'll get on with the stamping and then we're going to be on to sealing. So I finished the top and now I'm just kind of Finishing off the kind of little bits that I think need done and what I'm doing is I've got my gold and I'm basically doing the ignore the absolute mess. It, 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 it really does, you do make a mess when you're doing things like this. Um, so I'm just loading up my stamp and I'm just doing some of these edges in some gold. Just to get, keep the detail going. Get my varnish out of the way. And maybe down here at the feet. And this, now there's a big ridge here, so it's not going to in theory really do that much, but it'll give something. It'll give a, a look of at least distress, if nothing else. Put that there. And finish this off here. So that's, that's that all done and I'm happy with that. I think I might rub some gold just around this edge here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm opening up my drawers and just check all oh, my decoupage is properly, I can see a little loose bit there, glued in. And because you can see the difference here, this is shiny and this is matte. This bit here is the piece I've painted in. This gold and this is shiny. This has got a kind of sheen on it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a satin varnish just so that it all ties in. This will be shiny, it'll all be shiny then. So, well not too shiny, but you know, it's going to have a little bit of a shine to it. So I'm going to fix a little bit of decoupage and then seal it and then it's on to staging. So this is the finished piece. Everything's done. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like it, please consider subscribing, push the bell notification and then you'll be notified when Martin and I release a new video. If you like it, tell me why you like it. If you don't, well, you know, that's that. And also, um, if you've got new things that you want to try and do and you're not sure how to do it and what the technique is or please just um, drop me a message in the comments and I'll see what I can do in my next video. Thanks for watching.